In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to use menu 13 in a Unidrive M700. Along the way, I'll also be demonstrating how to include an SI Universal Encoder module into your application. And I'll also be showing you an example of using menu 13 to perform some simple phase advance, phase retard control. So if you're ready, let's get started. To illustrate the use of menu 13, let's have a look at a typical application. A very common industrial control challenge is when there are two independently driven product conveyors that need to be synchronized together. The goal is to synchronize the two conveyors together such that the products on the top conveyor can be placed in between the lugs on the bottom conveyor. In this type of application, not only is it important that the speeds of the conveyors match, but also that the relative position of the lugs on the two conveyors line up as well. Let's see how we can solve this challenge using menu 13 in a Unidrive M700. To solve this challenge, we'll begin by using a Unidrive M700 and a unimotor permanent magnet servo motor to operate the lower conveyor. Next, we'll couple an encoder to the top conveyor. This encoder will provide a speed reference for the Unidrive M700 to follow. There are a couple different ways to integrate a secondary encoder into the Unidrive M700. One way is to wire the encoder into the encoder port on the drive. This method depends on the encoder you've chosen for your primary motor feedback. If you're using a serial only encoder, such as an NDAT encoder, then you're able to wire the secondary encoder into the same connector on the drive. The other option, and the one I'm going to be showing you in the video, is to add an SI Universal Encoder module to the Unidrive M700 and wire the encoder into it instead of the drive. Next, let's use MConnect software to configure the SI Universal Encoder module. I have a project started with MConnect software in which I've added my drive, I've added my motor, and I've got my motor feedback device configured as well. The next thing I need to do is I need to add the SI Universal Encoder module to my project. To do that, I'm going to click on slot 3, which is where the module is installed, and then I'll drop the list down, and I'll choose SI Universal Encoder. The SI Universal Encoder module has two ports on it, port 1, which is a high-density 15-pin connector, and port 2, which is a 10 position connector. I've wired the encoder from the conveyor into port 1. The settings for port 1 are found here in the parameters under menu 17. Just so you know, if you use port 2, the settings for port 2 are in menu 27. So I'm going to double click on menu 17 and we'll get the settings for the encoder that I'm using plugged in. I'm going to come down and start here with parameter 34. That is the rotary lines per revolution. My encoder is 1024 lines, so I'll plug that in here. Next, I'll check the supply voltage. My encoder is a 5 volt supply, so I don't need to change anything there. And then I'm going to come down and choose the device type itself. The encoder that I'm using is just a standard quadrature encoder. So our designation for that type of encoder is, I'll drop the list down, is just AB. So that's all I need to do at this point to configure that encoder that's on the conveyor. Now I'll move into menu 13 and we'll configure the standard motion controller. Here I have MConnect software open and I am connected to the drive and we're going to have a look now at setting up menu 13. Menu 13 is in the parameters folder here so I will double click on this. Menu 13 is called the standard motion controller and I should begin by explaining that. What we mean by standard motion controller, another word for it, is gearing. Uh, menu 13 is used specifically to have the follower axis, which in our case is the lower conveyor here, follow a speed reference that's being generated by the encoder which is attached to the upper conveyor. So standard motion controller is an alternative 
to using the advanced motion controller, the AMC, which is also built into the M700. Menu 13 has the advantage of being a little eager to use. So to begin, let's look at some of these parameters. The first thing we need to do is look at parameter 4. That's the standard motion reference source. So in other words, where is this speed reference coming from? Now, as you recall, I've wired my encoder into P1 on the SI Universal Encoder module, which is located in slot 3. So that's why I've chosen P1 slot 3 here. If I drop down the list, you can see there are other alternatives here as well. So I'll choose P1 slot 3. The next thing is the standard motion feedback source. So the speed reference is coming from the encoder in slot 3, but the feedback now is coming from my motor encoder, which is connected directly to the drive. So that's why I have this chosen here. Now, if you should find that once you are running, you find that the motor is rotating in the wrong direction, you can simply flip this bit here, which is parameter 6, to invert the output of the drive so it runs the correct direction relative to the reference. Parameters 7 and 8 are the ratio, the speed ratio, numerator, denominator, number of turns of the follower per number of turns of the master. So in our case, I want it to follow one to one. Now I'm going to skip over the proportional term here for a moment and go right down to parameter 10 because this really defines how we're going to utilize that encoder signal coming from the master axis. If I drop this list down, you're going to see some options here. And basically, you're going to see the choice of rigid or non-rigid. To illustrate this point, I'm going to begin by showing you what non-rigid does. So I've got my master conveyor set up, and I'm going to initiate my master conveyor now and get it running. And now I'm going to start my bottom conveyor running as well. And it's running. But to show you how this, uh, these different options perform, I'm going to be using CT scope now. So I'll flip over to CT scope and I'll start my trace. Now what you're going to see here, the yellow, this is my motor feedback. This is our lower conveyor. This is speed feedback from the conveyor. The red trace up here is the reference. And as you can see, in non-rigid mode, there is quite a discrepancy between those two. So that's why we have these different options. So I'll stop my trace there, and I'll stop my lower conveyor. And I'll go back to CT M connect here, and I'll change my non-rigid. And now I'll show you what rigid does. So once again, I'll start my conveyor. And we'll go back to CT scope. Well, now you can see I've still got quite a discrepancy here. It's 100 RPM, but it's better. Where it was 300, now it's 445 or so. But my reference is still up here at 500. So I'm going to stop that. And I'll stop my conveyor. I'll go back to mConnect. And now what we'll do is we'll introduce these feed-forward variables. A feed-forward term is an extra bit of speed correction that's added to the speed loop to help close the gap between the reference and the feedback. So I'll begin with non-rigid speed feedback here, feed-forward. Well, let's see what that does. I'll start my conveyor. I'll go back to CT scope. I'll start my trace. Now, as you can see, uh, we, we're, we're much better. The red trace here is the master. So you can see we're still deviating, but it's you know plus or minus 5 RPM, let's say. So plus or minus 10% of the reference with, without um, any sort of tuning at all. I haven't done anything to the speed loop. So 
this is much better than the other two alternatives. So generally speaking, you're going to want to use uh, one of the feed forward options. Now the next option I'm going to show you is what rigid lock does. Rigid lock does is it matches not only the speed of the master, but it's going to match the position of the master as well. So in my example, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to stop my conveyor and I'm going to leave the master running. So I'm going to go back to mConnect now and I'm going to introduce rigid speed feed forward. Now when I go back to CT scope, watch what happens. So I've started and there's my master. Now I haven't started the follower yet. So I'm going to start the follower now. And you're going to see, notice how it overspeeds by about 150 RPM. It's doing that to try to compensate for the position lost relative to the master. Now if I let this run a while, what you're going to see is once that position error has been run out, then you're going to see that the follower will move back down and run at 500. So I've got quite a bit of error that I've induced here and I've put a limit as to how much correction I can apply which is 150 RPM. So it's going to overspeed and it's going to run at this rate for a while now but eventually what's going to happen is the follower here will decelerate down and run at the same rate as the master. So, if there it goes. So you see what happened? At this point we'd run out all of the position error that had accumulated and now we're running at the same speed as the master or the upper conveyor here. So I'll stop that. Generally speaking, the rigid feed forward is uh, desirable just for the sake that it really helps to tighten up the relationship between the master and the follower. So now we're following the upper conveyor at the same speed. But what I want to show you here before we move into the next step of the video is I'm going to zoom in and show you this error. So if I look here, you'll see that we're still deviating here we're running along at the same speed but we still have some speed error here as we move along. So if you can envision those two conveyors and the lugs on those conveyors now, even though we're running at the same speed, those lugs are gradually going to be walking away from one another. The position of the upper and the lower won't be in sync and that's because of this speed error here. So what I'm going to show you next is I'm going to show you how to incorporate a phase advance and phase retard function into menu 13. To finish our application today, I'm going to be adding what I'll term phase advance and phase retard. And what the purpose of that is going to be is that's going to allow us to phase shift or position shift the lugs on the conveyor that we're controlling, the lower conveyor, relative to the master conveyor. Now, I showed you in the previous video how to use rigid lock. Well, by definition, that locks the speed and position of the follower relative to the master. So I've had to change my operating mode to non-rigid speed feed forward to allow me to use this phase advance and phase retard functionality I'm about to show you. That functionality is going to come through the use of this relative jog function that you see here. Relative jog is an internally generated speed command that can be used to add to the current speed or subtract from the current speed. So the amount of speed to add or subtract is programmed here in parameter 17. So I'll just use 100 RPM for an example. And then to actually activate the jog, we're going to attach menu 13 parameter 18 to a digital input on the drive and then to get it to go reverse menu 13 parameter 19 is a direction bit 
And the way this works is if I want to reverse or subtract 100 RPM, I will turn this bit on, leave it on, and then engage my jog. So let's go look at menu 8 to see how the terminals would be set up for this. So in menu 8, I will come down to parameter number 25. There we are. So on terminal 28 on the drive, I have configured the direction bit. Let's go over there. So there's the direction bit on terminal 28. And then the actual uh, phase advance retard input will be on terminal 27. So I've assigned function 1318 to it. So to see how this works now, let's go back to CT scope. And I'll start my conveyors. And I'll start my trace. And as you can see, we're following along fairly well. We do have some speed deviation. Some of that can be accounted to tuning. But we're following along pretty well here. Now watch what happens when I hit the phase advance. So imagine that the lugs on the lower conveyor are lagging the master above. So I'm going to turn on the phase advance now. And you see what it does? It adds my 100 RPM to the base speed. So I shift the position of the lower conveyor relative to the top. Now, conversely, if the lower conveyor was leading the upper conveyor, then I will turn on my direction bit, and I will engage my phase retard input. So the longer I have it on, the slower the lower conveyor will be. And that's all there is to it. Again, uh, menu 13 is an alternative to using the advanced motion controller. And there are uh, more automatic ways to do this phase advance and retard. But in ap those applications like ours, where there's going to be an operator uh, attending to the line, watching visually to see that the lugs are advancing or retarding, this is an effective solution. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it informative, and if you have any questions, I can be reached at the email shown here. Please refer to the training section of our website for more information about our training courses and to see our current training schedule.